might have been dropped. This is a Christmas story, and it's entitled Giving God's Way. Mom, Mom, exclaimed Keith as he burst into the kitchen. You'll never guess what our class is going to do. Mother closed the oven door and smiled with amusement. I'll guess, she teased, you're going to learn a new lesson on why boys should not track snow <laughs> onto mother's clean floor. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, said Keith, glancing down at his soggy shoes. It's just that I'm so excited, I forgot. You're forgiven, said mother. Now, what is so exciting? We're going to have a contest, Sunday school junior class contest, to see who can bring the most money and stuff for the missionary box. And mom, you know what the prize is? A nice blue jacket with our church name on the back. Oh just in time for Christmas, too. Well, that's wonderful, Keith, said Mother thoughtfully. I suppose you're going to try for that coat? I sure am. I'm going to win. You wait and see. I'm going to be all those other juniors. They're not as fast as I am. I'll cover the whole housing project before they even get started. Where will the money and other items be sent? Asked Mother, troubled a little by Keith's obvious pride in himself. To the orphanage right here in our town. I'm going to give and give and give and work and work. I'll be the one to wear that coat. Oh, Keith, interrupted Mother. You better get those wet clothes off. That snow water is dripping off your pant legs. And son, remember, it is blessed to give and to work hard as long as it is done for Jesus' sake and not merely for selfish reasons. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Understand? A word to the wise is sufficient. But Keith didn't seem to hear Mother's words. He hurried away to change clothes, making plans all the while. I'll comb Larson Street first, because there are mostly old ladies living there, and they will probably give. <laughs> then, I'll fir then I'll try First Street and Brewster. I'll bring in more than all the rest. I will give until everyone will know my name's not Keith Workman, or nothing. I'll be a workman to win. <laughs> the days flew past as Christmas Day drew near. Shoppers were everywhere, slushing through the streets, gaily musing of what they would buy next. Homes were aglow with brilliant Christmas trees and candles flickering in frosted windows. Everyone seemed happy and alive with the Christmas spirit. That is, almost everyone. Keith, however, was too busy in his own dreams to have the true Christmas spirit. By now, he was well on his way to becoming the winner of that coat, much to his friends' admiration and envy. During program practice one evening, Sister Tate left her 22 youngsters for just a few minutes to answer the phone. It was then that Keith's real rivalry began. Jeremy Judson was a young, year younger than Keith, dropped a heavy sack on the floor beside the missionary box. What's that? asked Keith. My collection for the children's home, he answered happily. Look at this, Keith, yelled Mitch. You have yourself some competition. <laughs> Maybe you'll not be wearing that coat after all. <laughs> As the other boys laughed, Keith felt his face flush with anger. His fists tightened and perspiration beaded on his forehead. Yeah, sure, he said hotly. Competition? If Pug knows Jeremy Judson is all I have to compete against, I'm not worried. Jeremy heard those words, but he didn't defend himself. Keith glanced mockingly at the brave boy who seemed strangely unshaken by such a remark. Just then, Sister Tate returned, and Keith had to keep his anger to himself as the program practice continued and finally came to a close. Remember, Junior, said Sister Tate at dismissal, this missionary box is very important to those 57 orphans at Havensview. So whoever receives the award is not actually working for himself, but others, but for others, and for Christ. Now it's time we pray and be dismissed. Who would like to lead us in our closing prayer? Let's see. Out of all these hands waving at me, which shall I choose? Keith's arm felt as if it would break as he waved it vigorously in the air. Surely I'll be chosen, he thought. After all, haven't I memorized the most verses for Sister Tate? And, I, and haven't I won quiet sea prizes almost every week? Jeremy, she said finally. Jeremy Judson, since Jesus came into your heart last Sunday, why don't you pray for us? The inner anger inside of Keith deepened as Jeremy prayed sincerely. Dear Jesus, thank you for saving me. I don't know much about you yet, but all I do know is that I love you and I want to give you all I have. You did that for me. Amen. Why did she call on him, thought Keith angrily. Favoritism. 
That's what it is. I've got to think of something. I can't let that fat head win my jacket. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that very night, when Keith got home, he emptied his piggy bank of every coin and placed the bulging pouch inside his collection bag, then proceeded to search for, for toys, even his favorites, so that he could have plenty to put in that box on Sunday. I will win. I will, mumbled the stubborn boy as he worked. Just then, Mother's voice interrupted Keith's busy thoughts. Son, why are you so red in the face and anxious? I've been standing here in the doorway watching you ransack your room. What are you doing? At that moment, Keith changed his expression and faked a smile. I'm giving to missions, Mother. <laughs> See how much I'm giving? There was nearly $5 in my bank, and I'm giving it all, all of it, Mother. And, well... I'm proud of you, son, said Mother, looking earnestly into Keith's eyes. I didn't know that you had such a love for Jesus and for others, but here you are giving your all. That's what it takes, my boy, as long as you're giving with the right motive. In other words, as long as you give God's way. Keith stopped a minute and plopped down on his unmade bed. What do you mean, Mom? He asked, feeling a little uncomfortable. Well, to give you an example, when Jesus came as a baby to become one of us and to die on the cross, why did he do it? Why would he leave a land of perfect happiness and come here to suffer? Was it because we deserve such a price to be paid for our soul? Or was it because he wanted to gain a reward for himself? He thought for a minute before he spoke, Mom, it's just like our program theme about the most wonderful gift. He died for us because of love not to get a reward. You are so right, son. Now think about that for a while. And when you get this mess cleaned up in your room, come downstairs for some fresh cookies and hot chocolate. <clears throat> Keith did think of Mother's words for a short time. He wondered if somehow she knew, if Mother knew he hated Jeremy. Oh. The hatred was worse now since Jeremy was trying so hard to win the coat that Keith coveted. But actually, Keith's jealous feelings had begun when Jeremy had gone up to pray at the altar after youth service one night. Keith had burned with envy when Sister Tate had praised Jeremy so highly for, re for becoming a Christian that she had even gone so far as to let him take up the offering in regular church. Why, thought Keith, <laughs> Jeremy's dad is an alcoholic and he'll probably be one too. And yet my favorite teacher, Miss Tate, treats him better than me. It's not fair. I've been coming to this church since I was a baby. I hate that Jeremy jumps and I'll teach him not to steal my chance of being a winner. One snowy day, not long before school would be out for the holidays, Keith and his friends hurried home, grabbed their bags, and started their door-to-door -door appeal for, for the, their missionary box. It was truly a good night for giving, and many people had cheerfully responded, much to the boys' delight. As Keith stopped to evaluate his game, Ricky called to someone across the street. Hey you! Hey Jeremy! Come here! Before Keith could protest, Jeremy stood beaming before them, holding a bag filled to overflowing with donations. What all do you have? asked Teddy. Lots of things, said Jeremy cheerfully. One lady gave ten dollars. <coughs> then another one from the same house filled my bag with all sorts of things for children. I guess she was rich or something and... You thief, exploded Keith. You got all the stuff from the Evans sisters, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Jeremy was speechless from surprise as he watched Keith's angry face. We worked our legs off going over this area and, ha and here you steal our best house. <laughs> oh, Keith, snapped Ricky. This is a public street. He can work here too if he wants. Well, I still say he did this on purpose to steal our best business so that he will get that coat. But you won't get it, Jeremy Judson, because I am going to be the winner of this contest. The surprised, hurt look at Jeremy's eyes didn't stop Keith's battle to win. But something else did. Something completely unexpected. Oh. A broken leg? Oh, oh Mom! I can't believe this happened to me, wailed Keith from a hospital examining table. His leg was swollen and throbbing, but the frustration in Keith's heart was even more painful than the leg. Now I can't win. I can't win that beautiful coat. Hot tears streamed down from Keith from Keith's eyes. Lie still, son, said Mother gently. I wish you would have obeyed your father and kept away from that pond, but you didn't listen. So I'm sorry, Keith, that you'll just have to accept the consequences. 
The days that followed were busy ones, full of last minute Christmas shopping and excitement. Almost all the children were anxiously awaiting Christmas Eve when they could be in the church program and see who would be the winner of that coveted blue coat. But Keith wasn't excited at all. He sat blankly staring into the falling snow, totally unaware of the lovely Christmas <coughs> in their living room and the cheery fire crackling in the fireplace. Mother's delicious reindeer cookies and hot chocolate sat untouched on the stand beside Keith's chair. What's the matter, son? asked Mom kindly. You aren't enjoying your snack. What are you thinking of so deeply? Never mind, he grumbled. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. It's just I'm not going to that program Friday night. You and Dad can go if you want to, but not me. I'll stay here by myself if I have to. Well, why? asked Mother, surprised. That program was all you talked about for weeks. What has changed your mind? Surely it's not your leg. Dad can take you in the wheelchair like Sam's father did for him when his ankle was broken. So, Mom, interrupted Keith, it's not my leg, it's the, the contest. Jeremy Judson, that fathead, if he wins, I'll, I'll, Keith, said Mother, shocked. <laughs> what has gotten into you? What difference does it make who wins? The important thing is the boxes for the children. You have done your part to bring big smiles on Christmas morning. And even if you don't win, you gave for Jesus, and that's what counts. That is giving God's way. Keith's face burned. He, how could he tell Mother that his giving was for another purpose, one that was selfish and cruel? When Friday night finally came, Keith found himself in church after all. Hmm. Well, here I am, thought Keith, feeling sorry for himself. I guess all the other children aren't getting ready for the program all but me. Here I sit. I hate being the oddball. The program turned out to be beautiful. Even Keith had to admit that. Many people were wiping tears as the children quoted verses and sang songs about the most special gift of all, God's Son. All the while, Keith kept glancing at the huge box in the corner, all decorated with an enormous bow at the top. Oh, how he wished that his leg hadn't been broken. He could have won. He had tried so hard, but now Jeremy or someone else would win. At the close of the program, Sister Tay stepped to the microphone, and everyone listened breathlessly. It was time for the reward at last. Keith yawned on purpose. <sighs> As we all know, our junior class has worked extra hard this year in bringing Christmas to the orphans at Haven's View. As you can see, they have done a tremendous job, and they all will receive some kind of recognition. But there is a special award for the one person that we did our best to choose prayerfully, the one who tried the hardest and brought the most in to fill this, to fill this box. At this time, I am pleased to present this special gift to the young man who worked so very hard to bring happiness to the orphans. His name is Keith Allen Workman. Oh, no. <laughs> For a second, Keith lost his breath, and his heart seemed to skip a beat. Had he heard right? Had they actually called his name? Yes, it was true. Dad was wheeling Keith down the center aisle, and the applause was deafening. Sister Tate held the handsome <coughs> coat high for the congregation to see, then placed it lovingly in Keith's trembling hands. He was too surprised for words. Even a thank you wouldn't come. After service, Keith's friends surrounded him, congratulating and praising him over and over. But Keith couldn't understand it all. How could he have won? Perhaps it was a mistake. Dad, please, he asked above the noise of the crowd, may I talk with Sister Tate before we leave? Sure, son, said Dad proudly. I'll gladly take our winner where he wants to go. <laughs> Tired but happy, Sister Tate soon greeted Keith with a smile. Congratulations, she said again. Were you surprised? Surprise wasn't the word for it, he answered. I was shocked. But Sister Tate, I don't understand. How could I have won when my legs kept me from working? Well, she said with a twinkle in her eye, I don't think Jeremy would mind if I told you. Mm -hmm. He actually won the coat key. Mm -hmm. But when he explained how hard you had worked before your accident and how you are the one who really deserved it, then I decided, along with Jeremy Judson, that you should be the winner. Mm -hmm. Tears filled Keith's eyes. Oh, Sister Tate, where is Jeremy now? I just got to talk to him. 
I think he is putting his shepherd's costume away. He's probably, oh, there he is now, just starting for the door. Jeremy, Jeremy, yelled Keith, please stop. Jeremy hurried over to Keith and extended his hand of friendship. Merry Christmas, he said joyfully. Then he stopped. Tears were slipping down Keith's cheeks. Jeremy, he said earnestly, tonight you have taught me a lesson I'll not forget mm -hmm. as long as I live. Now I know there really is something more to being a Christian than just going to church and saying you are a Christian. You've shown me what it means to be like Jesus, mm -hmm. not giving for a reward, but because of love. I've been more than mean to you, and I don't deserve what you did, but Jeremy, I want you to pray for me. I can't wait any longer. Yes. I want to Amen. give my heart to Christ for real and learn how to give God's way like you do. And that very night, he found the Christ of Christmas, mm -hmm. the joy of all the earth. And as for Jeremy, he and Keith became best friends for Keith. Amen. Amen.